ce frică, da, tu cu ce mică, mă, cu ce tăcuță, ce frică, ce frică. Oh, am lipită de mine, am lipită de mine. Hai! Wow, that was aggressive. Hello. I am coming back. Yes, I am. The second time I said that, I was like, okay, I'm trying to convince myself. This is the new puppy who's terrified because she thinks we're gonna go driving and she has car sickness. So, <laughs> but we're not. Oh, this is the teddy bear. Oh. Oh, she's like, what's going on? I'm bracing myself. I'm bracing myself. She's terrified right now. Um, I got her because I wanted to show her off because, all right, let me talk a little bit. Oh, you could you. And she's also really warming me up to him. Let me back off a little. You're kind of upside down because I have you on the steering wheel. You're probably also crooked. Uh, there we go. The steering wheel isn't like perfectly leveled. Okay. There we go. The screen flips upside down, but because the steering wheel part, upper part is like in the in the way, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, anyways, let me not get sidetracked over here. I'm in my mom's car. It's a new car. Well, I mean, it's a few months old now, but they finally got a new one because our last minivan lasted like, I don't know, 15 years or something. Maybe not, no, close to that, close to that, like 10 years or so, and it was like, used to its max. We went so many places with it. We traveled throughout the US so many times through it. So it was maxed out. It was not working anymore. They got some incentive for that. Anyways, why am I talking to you about that? Okay. Well, I have a little tiny little bit here. See, very small. Um, that, you know, I'm probably improvising and whatnot, but kind of, I got up to this morning. I had a phone call with a friend's brother who I guess, I mean, my friend and I haven't really talked in a while. His brother and I also worked together on a play and I kept seeing his emails. I'll get to that, but I kept seeing his emails and I was like, why, why am I not reaching out? And I think I'm just in that moment where this vlog is possible and encouraged and what I should be doing. And then also the conversation that I had with him that I might talk about afterwards especially if i remember i might forget anyways but she's so scared she's so scared <laughs> she's like this is driving mode this is driving mode we don't move we do not move <laughs> i'm like trying to move her just a little bit so she's more like center but she's like no <laughs> I'm not trying to move you all the way. Okay, so anyways, I'm sorry this is reading. You know, I'm I'm used, or you're used to, or I'm used to, I don't know, we're all used to me just talking in front of the camera. But as I said, I woke up for this phone call. I mean, not for the phone call, because I also had to go to work. And I had this phone call as well. <laughs> before it, like 10 minutes before it. And it's so interesting how time slows down sometimes because sometimes time flies by and you haven't really done anything and sometimes it's you're really in tune with time and it's giving you all the time in the world so you can finish what you needed to finish i kept looking at the the watch like is it not time yet for a phone call yeah anyway so i i wrote this i'm i, I don't know. i feel self-conscious but that's the whole point of being on this blog back again it also so all of this was sparked honestly from a conversation why are you already overheating you're five minutes in it's cold in this car it was sparked initially by a conversation I had uh, Sunday I sat with it and I didn't really think in that conversation or Monday or yesterday really I didn't think oh you know what I should start my vlog again like it, it was nothing like that it was really in the conversation I actually kind of was relating to this person pine tree remember him let's resurrect that name do I want <laughs> to like use code words anymore I don't know but I was talking to him and you know what I might not but it I'm I'm all over the place. Welcome to my brain. Nothing much has changed. <laughs> but also a lot has changed. But anyways, I definitely could relate to him in terms of, you know, I sort of came back on Facebook and I don't really feel like posting things. I remember, you know, taking pictures for, and it wasn't for Instagram, but I remember like, oh, I should post this on Instagram, but I don't really want to. Like, why am I posting it? I honestly can tell you, in my case at least, it was from a depression standpoint. It was not a natural, but I can also see how people might 
might not realize that's what it is. When you're in depression, you don't realize you're in depression. Not quite. It depends on how extreme and it depends on if you have people around you uh, to tell you that, all this stuff, but you don't really realize. It's not something that, because it doesn't happen overnight. It happens gradually. And I can tell you 100% that, at least in my experience, in my case, and to whoever this might be helpful for, you don't realize you think that you've grown up, you've matured, oh, I'm not a kid anymore, I have better things to do, and you make these excuses for being cynical. I'm kind of already talking about what I wrote, but let me start with that. So put that on hold, because I'm gonna talk about it in a second. So the vlogs and the blogs are coming back. That is not with the voice that I wrote this with. It was a lot more exciting, but I am like holding back because I'm like <laughs> nervous. Also reading sucks. Maybe not as de detailed and large and etc. as I used to have them, especially the vlogs, but I realized I don't want to end up where not being free is. It's so hard to choose the right words. I'm still not a good choose the right words person. Where you control what the outside sees, hoping you'll be um, accepted for who you are, but you don't let them see who you are, etc, etc. I don't want to lose myself as so many adults do and call it growing up. You can grow up and still be amazing. You don't have to be cynical, a party pooper, secretive, fake, manipulative, etc, etc. This is happening right now. Oh. She's, she's, She's stressed. I feel bad for her. But also, maybe this will help her, you know, be better. Isn't that how you're supposed to get over phobias, sort of? What's that word? Exposure therapy or whatever? I want to embrace my, uh, my values fully again. It seems fake. So, even though these are the words I wrote, and in my head, I was very excited and I, I I was saying them, but I because I was in my room waiting for this phone call, I was like, oh, I need to like write them down and say them later. But when I say them to you, reading off the paper, words I wrote, I meant, etc., and I'm trying to bring that same energy that I had when I wrote them, it's like it feels fake because it kind of is fake because the moment's not, you know, genuine. It's not there. I'm very sensitive to fakeness, very sensitive. Anyways, I want to embrace my values fully again. Honesty, integrity, joy, truth love, beauty, and with that, how many people felt kind of like this year, oh no, Moulin Rouge is happening again. It's COVID-19, not tuberculosis, Tuber what? tuberculosa, see, I can see it in, in, in Romanian just fine. We kind of got, kind of got rid of that, kind of, in places where there are vaccines and things, and also like clean environments, I believe, was really the big one to get rid of that, but, but I honestly was thinking that, like, oh no. Moulin Rouge can happen again right now. Anyways, it's painful. I feel terrified because I've been in a place where speaking freely is kind of frowned upon or I felt like it was frowned upon. I felt threatened if I did so, um, if I'm alive. And yet at the same time, sometimes people want you to be alive but pick and choose what parts you bring, but still be alive, you know? Like, oh, you can't be honest. You can't, you know, be outspoken. Uh, you can't be, you can't text too much. You can't do this, but be alive, be fully alive. Why are you boring? Why are you negative? Why are you not positive? And people, people don't realize that. It's up to you to kind of like keep true to yourself, but also it sucks because sometimes you get in these situations, in these relations or relating to people who you don't want to do that. Like with family, for example, is a good example for most people. You can't really disown your family. You know, you can't walk away. You can't break up with your family. Um, as much as you can, physically maybe, they're still your family and yet you still have to deal with these things. Anyways, let me get back to this. You, they want you to be alive, but not other parts which are needed for your aliveness. Integrity has always been huge for me, and that literally means the state of being whole and undivided, and your temperature is high. I'll be right back. All right, so we, we tried to survey the area. We tried to see that we're in the garage. <laughs> and it's still not working. Oh my gosh. Oh, her nails are digging into my thighs. <laughs> Integrity being the state of being whole and undivided. You can't be full of life, but pick and choose only what you like or someone likes you to be. It's like kind of all of 
or nothing for this. And I've become closed off for acceptance, to not be left, to not be abandoned. You know, I closed myself off. I got off social media. I did all this stuff. And then I guess like, thankfully, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I'll end up alone without friends, without someone, without a good job. Like it just my life will be crap. But if I don't have the integrity, it's really, I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Um, I kind of went through the last few months with... So this is hard because I, I want to, again, go back to my values, honesty, integrity, all that stuff. Integrity, I think, is confused with honesty a lot of the times, but I honestly believe in this, the state of being whole and undivided. You are what you say and what you mean is what you think and everything is aligned. But transparency, etc., etc. And I want to tell you their names for that reason but I also want to keep to respect their privacy because I'm I haven't talked to them like hey can I mention your name or not so I hate using code words but I feel like I have to and then maybe in the future I won't but I just I don't I want to respect someone else's just how they choose you know to live their life and stuff I was um, going through this with well pine tree we already have a, a code word for him but I don't have a code word for her blue I don't know because there's this blue little lotion thing there you go i don't know just like pine tree doesn't it's not really related i don't think so anyways i even forgot what, what I said. oh yes yeah i actually had this conversation with pine tree well with both of them and it kind of went nowhere especially with blue i feel like they want the parts of me that makes them feel comfortable that they like but they don't but they don't want the parts of me that it makes them uncomfortable uh, or they don't like. And uh, uncomfortable, comfortable, it can mean like because you have to face yourself or because you just don't like it or whatever it is, you know, it just makes you uncomfortable. But yeah, and then I realized I wrote this song because I was like, you gotta take both sides of me. It's like, I have to take both sides of you. You know, if, in any type of relationship, you, you can't pick and choose what you want from a person even outside of a, a relationship but in general in life you can't really do that with politicians with everything like people aren't perfect and we all have bad sides so it, the song is like a coin like there's two sides to each coin you can't have only one side you can choose to look at only one side you can choose to display only one side but that's not real People talk about shadow and I hear conflicting slash confusing what shadow is really um, in terms of like psychology. And then there's also the astrology type of shadow. I think they kind of combine because like it, I guess it all comes from Jung and Jung was a psychologist that I actually really was like, ooh, that's intriguing. He's a little more out there, I guess, for technical people. So I think it kind of bridges, overlaps, whatever. Oh, your temperature. I think that she's also kind of getting restless, like, we're not going anywhere. Why are we in the car? But yeah, anyways, you and shadow work, blah, blah, blah. Just like a coin. You can choose to display that or people can choose to see only one side of you, but there's two sides of you. And if you want an honest relationship of any sort of kind, I struggle in like working relationships because it's like you can't pick and choose what you get from me. You just can't. And that's part, I think, with integrity being such a huge value for me. Like I have to to be one with myself I can't just show you one side of me having said that I do appreciate that having them in my life has helped me balance it more towards the center okay so two things with that one I I do I have has hesitated in talking too much about things that I've done that I regret because sometimes people use that against you and they latch on so they escape their responsibility and all that stuff however I am working on you know that's not my problem what they do is not my problem I can't control them I can only control myself I can show up and I can like take responsibility and all that stuff and if they don't take their responsibility you know I unfortunately can't do anything about that but it does give me a lot of anxiety like oh, 
I'll be the scapegoat, potentially. Like, I don't even know. But also, I also feel like potentially been that anyways. So I'm like, I might as well just like talk. They say like keeping your mouth shut with rumors and things, it's the best way you can go about things. And I don't know. I'm not here, especially with this one. I'm not here to dispel any rumors. I don't even know rumors. I have been off Facebook. I have been off the world, you know, for so long. And I don't really, I don't really want to entertain that necessarily unless it comes to me or whatnot. But yeah, like as far as what I bring and how I show up, I want to like take that back i want to show up with integrity yes it might not be as long although this is pretty long as detailed about my life these vlogs as they used to be and my thoughts and whatnot but i don't want to live in fear i don't want to live in in the shadows sort of you know i don't i don't want to just show my shiny side at the same time that's also exactly why i'm bringing back the vlogs because my shiny side has been forgotten put somewhere on a dark shelf catching cobwebs they don't get caught but you know what I mean I was watching um, this person's Instagram I've lost myself I'm losing myself I'm not that happy anymore why not what keeps me from being that I'm, I'm actually like in the past couple of months I've been happy as then almost ever in a way in a way but definitely not a very long time in like two years but I'm not showing it and I don't know how to show it and I'm afraid to show it and I'm afraid to speak because anything even good or bad if I show up as this like awesome person or if I show up as an awful person or if I show up with truth or if I show up with well not lies I will never lie but you know like not show up with truth would be like the opposite I felt for a while that it was a lose-lose situation and might not might as well not even get into that and I honestly I mean this is what came from this conversation about yeah growing up I also felt that growing up meant to talk less to be more less transparent to be more censored he has, I guess, the opinion that when you post on Instagram, Facebook, etc., you're seeking approval. And I'm telling you, I lived through my cousin committing suicide. It's not quite to that level that we're at. I don't want to go down that slippery slope. And I do... I honestly do believe that it's in you or it isn't. I don't know. That's that's a whole other topic. And I'm not here to talk about mental health. And, and that's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm just saying I've seen perception is so much. And that's why I started with... What did I start with? I don't want to end up where not being free is. It's a really weird not perfect ways to say what I mean but I don't want to end up cynical I don't want to be Scrooge that's basically exactly where I'm coming from I see myself going that way and I see him going that way or have actually he's he's all the way there and I can understand and I can relate but I also realize at least for me I cannot speak for what's inside him but at least for me that is an illusion that's not real me and that's not growing up that's not maturing you know you can be outspoken without being stupid you can be alive without being um foolish you know you can do all these things it, it, and then you can be respected too i feel like i totally understand where he's coming from i just i don't want to choose that i don't want to be unhappy with my life and i'm not saying he's unhappy with his and i think in this moment he i don't think he believes that he's unhappy and he might not be as a consequence because again like your your perception in a way you know like everything is in your perception it's in your control how you perceive things so if you want to be someone who's like censored and secretive and um and not like to hurt others but to not get hurt you know that's definitely your choice and maybe it works out for you it doesn't work out for me it would be a lie and I feel and I've been feeling like I was living a lie and I also I feel lost us us <laughs> you know I lost relationships because of that in the past couple of years gained this one back with my friend in uh, California and it kind of made me go back to myself in that way and I was telling her I think yesterday like I'm so maybe I didn't phrase it this way but I'm so grateful I'm so happy but I'm so thankful that we're talking again and reconnected a couple months ago for real 
I think in July or something, I was telling my mom, like, I don't even want to hear about her. I don't care about her. Because I was still hurt. And I was still in a state that had passed a while ago, you know? Misunderstandings that happened between us that led to, like, really bad arguments. Like, really bad. But I'm thankful. And I was telling her, like, like this helps so much. Because you know me. And I know me with you differently than I know me with any of these other people. And anyone that I would meet from now on. So that helps so much. And you and she kind of, you know, sort of calls me out like, hey, that's this is not you. And and as much as sometimes I don't take it or you know, I get mad mad and angry or mangry. I listen. Like I think people uh I know Pine Tree almost said his name. Oh my gosh. But I know he like gets so frustrated with me that I don't listen. I listen. I just listen differently. <laughs> Like, I'm not going to show you that I'm listening right away. I'm going to tell you an hour later, like, you know what? What you said, yeah, that kind of makes sense. That's how I listen. I'm sorry. I have a lot of pride. Part of the reason why we have struggled so much and, and still are struggling in a way. But anyways, I need to come back. The heat. Oh, Oh, She's the other thing, so I brought her because I really wanted to hide her. And I want to talk about this for five seconds. Oh, obviously more than five seconds, but you know what I mean. Arena five seconds. Arena time. I didn't want anyone to associate her with me because I actually went through something pretty traumatic. People might say I'm exaggerating, but Blue went through it with me and I'm getting emotional already. I can only speak my truth and so I want to do this a more in-depth video differently maybe in a different time but I felt terrified so one of one of the reasons I got off Facebook and I'll I'll share that as well that video I think too but one of the reasons I got off Facebook was I didn't want I felt stalked well what a great time for the t all right I'm back had a like a it just hit me like the journey I've been on this year has been so crazy amazing anyways but not not stock literally but like social media wise so i was with pine tree for a while and we weren't but we were but we weren't but we were blah 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 i've never had this well i i take that back i've had this happen one other time however that was so different so much like because that person that other time was very upfront very direct very there's no manipulation there's no games no trickery nothing um i'm not saying he was like a womanizer it was interesting it's kind of the same zodiac sign but either way she was like so upfront so mature about it etc i was like willing to be there for her you know and i think because of that example because of living that i sort of thought this would go the same way but it didn't this girl i was minding my own business it was before uh pine tree gosh i almost said his name again pine tree and i even went out or i even thought about it i get this friend request on facebook and i'm like what the heck this person doesn't i don't know this person and i know people friend people without knowing them apparently i don't the only friend in common was him i was like well, that's suspicious. So I don't think we, he and I started on a good foot because of that. Because how can, I mean, trust levels were like zero from, from that point on from my side. Because I'm not at that age of those things, you know? Like that's like high school, college, like that's, that's, that's not what I was about. Again, another time, another story. But basically like that was like the first time. And then the second time, the first time, I mentioned it to him when we started going out. I was like, hey, if, if you guys have something going on, just don't drag me into it. I am not interested in a triangle, circle, whatever, and like, don't, don't put me in the middle. Fast forward to basically a year later, she sent me a friend request again. I've gone through a journey of how I feel about that because it really ruined my life. I did not ask for that. If you suspect something if you you know if there's like it's two timing kind of situation whatever it is like you are upfront about it but she played games and so it was kind of like pointless what she did i asked like hey if you if you have something that you want to know or need to know or whatever you want to talk about then cool let's meet up even though i didn't really want to i was kind of like forced into that uh, again another long story but yeah i was like i don't feel comfortable like 
she would be Facebook stalking me at that point and I don't feel comfortable about that. If that's the case that he's, you know, two timing both of us or whatever, then like be upfront about it. But she was like, oh no, I have nothing to worry about or should, or do I? I was like, oh, okay. Uh, going about it, you know, passive aggressively like that. Like, oh my gosh. But it ruined me because as a result, I got to know some of her. I began comparing myself. I had to get off Facebook. One, because, well, here I am talking about why I got off Facebook. Well, partially. This is not the whole story, but partially. I felt I wanted to disown everything about me that was similar to her. I also didn't want him to see me. Because I felt like, oh, he's getting satisfaction of having these two girls not fight for him, but kind of at that point. Like, after that happened for a month, two months, I was like, we're done. Oh my gosh, this is, this is too long of a story. Basically, all I want to say is that I've hesitated being out in, in the world in case some girl of his saw me and decided to social media stalk me. And I, in that same thought process I wanted to protect my dog because she's a little baby she's my little baby because you know here I am childless oh you go you 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 just like leave me alone I'm terrified because I also feel like I lost my Instagram account because of that girl but I just I don't I I felt very scared very paranoid not for my life thankfully but in any other form and then also like he started putting in on me that I was kind of like that lately and I was like wait what come again what that was that was hard to take because i'm like i'm paying for something that someone else did or if everyone does that with you doesn't that say something about you and what you're doing because i think it does you know how is that on me and that's why i'm saying like with that girl like i feel like i've gone through a journey like don't blame her entirely because i can't because it's not just you know her fault but also like it's hard and i just i don't think that that was productive or healthy and it made me unhealthy and it caused me a year of hating myself of disowning myself to the point where i didn't know who i was and i didn't want to show up i wanted to hide this is this is getting annoying just just temperature long story longer because of this like temperature and all that stuff that screwed me up like internally i feel finally like i'm coming out of that and i'm doing these vlogs it didn't come as a result of like with her like i haven't really thought about that in a while but i definitely felt like i don't want to be on facebook because i don't want some girl to friend to like find me and suspect me and like all that stuff and that's really not on them you know any girl who does that it's not on her it's it's on him if he gives her obviously he gives her a reason to to feel that way so it's 100 percent. but you know either way i was just like i don't want to be involved in any of that I've told him him that so many times. I don't know. I don't know. I honestly feel like it's definitely with us. It's definitely two sides to every story, him and I. And yeah, that's that's all I can say. Like I I just think we got lost in translation a lot. Uh, him, him and I. But either way, I say that because I want to kind of express my hesitation that this isn't a decision that I've taken lightly. I've kept trying to come back, but I was never ready. I'm still feeling so terrified like my body some muscles like my thighs and like my forearms are so tense because i just am terrified that will happen again and i don't want that i don't want that please i don't know it, maybe i have to have this conversation with him like get your life together you know work on yourself so you don't get in these situations and don't put me in these situations either don't put anyone in those situations like no one deserves that like that screwed me up I blew, like I said, blue knows how much. Like, I hated myself. And I don't say that lightly because I've never hated myself. I never saw, looked in, my, in the mirror and saw someone I didn't like that I wanted to, like, you know, crawl out of my skin because of. I guess that's where I'm coming from now. I'm self-aware enough, I guess, to know what that was and what it wasn't. That wasn't me growing up. That wasn't me maturing. Me censoring myself wasn't me, yeah, maturing, growing up. It was 
fear and I don't want to live in fear. I don't want to hurt others. I don't want to use fake vulnerability because I feel this has also been sometimes that. You know, I've been vulnerable in words but not in here. So I would avoid being vulnerable here. I would be vulnerable in words. I would tell you everything but I wasn't truly vulnerable. I'll give you not an example per se but like an analogy sort of example. I can tell you everything. I can talk to you about anything. What I cannot do is stare in your eyes for a long time. I can't be silent with you. I can't be intimate physically, you know, and in in, I'm, I'm talking about like, oh yeah, make up, oh, make out, make out, blah, 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 but like not intimate make out, you know, like the slow lights on, see the other person make out, you know, like that's vulnerability, that's real intimacy, I can't do that, but I can talk about it all day, I can tell you everything you want to know and more, <laughs> much more than you want to know, but that's like my defense, you know, and that way I convince myself, oh, I'm already vulnerable, what are you talking about, and then going through things with him, I realized, oh wait, I wasn't vulnerable, and he called me out on things, I forgot about that, you know, like I think we've gotten to We've had the power struggle outside a relationship, outside like a dating relationship, a committed dating relationship. So I think that, I mean, it can be damaging no matter what, but I think that's even more damaging because you don't have the things to balance that out, you know, the good times, because you can, you were literally like your power struggle and that's all we, you do because you don't have to get along. You can just run away to your separate corners you know it's hard to get through it's hard to get through with blue too i feel like you know i don't know if we did the power struggle it kind of started feeling like that at some point it's hard it's hard when you're not acknowledging that my therapist says you know like the first step is to acknowledge it anything because without acknowledging it you're not gonna move forward from it you're not gonna get past it but we've also feel like have been acknowledging so many things that i think we're both kind of tired of acknowledging and talking and all that stuff so it's like a catch-22 what was i saying though wow wow it's funny though because you know being so like present and honest and stuff i didn't have mind blanks as much I don't know what I was saying. I just want to be me. You know, I, at one point I wanted to be me because I had realized just the simple beginning stage of I'm not who he fell for. <laughs> I want to say fell in like with. <laughs> That's like digressing. But yeah, like at that point I was more on my way to being my, my real self and I lost that. And that was kind of what I started talking about a bit ago. I started feeling for everyone that I had to give them only the things that made them feel good. You know, and he used to tell me, Pine Tree used to tell me, you know, I, I don't need you to be perfect, like great, not perfect, that's my ex, my first boyfriend's kind of thing. I don't need you to be happy all the time or something, I forget exactly how he said it, but like you're human, you know? Then it also turned because I was like getting these, like, I, I don't know, it's just a mess. You know, I'm aware that I don't know how to deal with the parts of me that aren't perfect. And also I feel like it's not that the parts aren't perfect, it's like how I bring them about that's not perfect. I am getting so off topic, so off track here. But yeah, that was like, I think one of the first moments where I was like, ooh, I need to get back to me. That was like a while ago, but it wasn't right completely for the right reasons, right? Because in that kind of thought, you're kind of doing it for someone else. And I wasn't trying to do it for him. Like I wasn't trying like, oh, I need, you can't even imagine um, our relating to each other. <laughs> I'll just call it that. I know people think they know. Those who say they don't know, they're correct. They don't know. But again, that's that's another topic. I then began wanting to be myself again for myself. In the past couple of months, I said I'd rather be happy than be in a relationship that makes me unhappy. That's not to say, doesn't mean walking away or not walking away from something, because I think people use that. All I'm saying is, my main focus is being happy. You know, having this integrity, being integral. 
<laughs> sounds weird to say. I believe that also brings me joy and happiness in my relationships. I'm not here to make choices about my relationships. I'm here to make choices about my relationship with me, I guess, and with life. And I, yeah, I, I don't want to get lost in the cynical, become like a Borg. I don't want to be a Borg. I want to stay me, a grown-up version of me. I've grown up so much in the past two, three years. I look back at 2017, I was a child at 32 or something, but people saw me as not a child. If they knew my age, well, I think just that, because I kind of looked young too. I don't know. I just, I feel like it just got messy because I, I wasn't quite fully me all around it got messy for myself for other people etc it's and then i use and i say this and i want to make this clear that it's not about choosing or not choosing a relationship with someone and i'm not talking about just like romantic because also with blue like we haven't really talked in a while all i'm saying i want to make that clear that's not what i'm saying because ah, i forgot i'm with that i'm with that Odette. i'm with that i'm with that i'm with that off <laughs> she's like what why are we still here what's going on life oh, i forgot shoot and host such a good point <laughs> oh that's that's right i remember i used to cut people out all the time and i thought that was of course your temperature is high and i'll be right back oh Ah, you're falling. <laughs> okay. And just when I got my point back, I used to cut people out of my life and think that was choosing happy. You know, like with my friend who uh, became a racist person. I don't need to deal with that. And I want to sustain my happiness. And if he's in my world, I'm not going to be happy because I don't agree with that. And I have a lot of issues with that. I mean, there is some truth because it, it sparks something in you, right? When he might post something that's like racist or something and then you get angry you it it sparks something in you but that's that's the key it triggers you if you remove the triggers or the things that trigger you it doesn't mean that you're healthily getting happy you're just putting it under the rug because that thing is still there and your triggers are still there and if it's not that person someone else will be triggering you i've been doing uh, uh, this work in the past three months or so with pds and i want to talk more about that soon but that's basically like uh, i became aware that my triggers aren't me because for a long time i it feels like i'm betraying myself if I don't give in to the triggers and I didn't use the word triggers at that time but I knew that it was a response it was a reaction it wasn't necessarily like I'm just sitting here by myself and that's what I feel you know that's who I am or whatever um Oof. I just want to eat her up um but yeah, so um, I can't believe I have another dog. Realize that removing the trigger doesn't make you healthier. It's just, I mean, removing the the person that triggers you doesn't make you healthy. doesn't mean the triggers aren't there. So the wound, the whatever you want to call it, it's still there. You have to heal it. And then no matter who's around you, you know, you can also create change. Like if you're not being triggered anymore by racism, you are able to create change for that to go away, <laughs> you know? Like when you're triggered, you're not really thinking clearly, not really listening. You're not really making logical choices in a way. There's sort of emotional choices. I think this is where people come from when they say, you know, heart's wrong, mind's right. Emotions, feelings are an illusion or they're like, they deceive you, they take you off track and, you know, thinking logic, etc., is the right thing. I don't think that's the case at all. I think that what they talk about is triggers, not emotions, not feelings. Emotions and feelings, you can have whether you're triggered or not, and you can use that. You can use that passion. You can have passion. If you're not triggered, you can have passion. When you're triggered, you have anger. And with anger, you're not going to change anyone's mind, and you're not going to bring anything of value necessarily because you'll be blinded by that anger. You'll be blinded by the trigger, and you're attacking that person in your mind you're not gonna enact change so that's i guess where 
I started coming from now it's and why I'm like wanting to make sure that it's very clear I'm not cutting relationships off or people off I'm not not doing that either that shouldn't be related to my choice for choosing happy choosing happy doesn't mean you break up with someone choosing happy doesn't mean you cut off friends these people that you feel don't serve your happiness right no being happy starts with you this is why i am on here with bed hair no makeup in this like shirt that i slept with <laughs> you know like oh i just i wish i could tell you so much but you're not even going to understand it because you're you mi would miss the context this would be like a, a few days long if i could tell you everything that i want to tell you and, and walk you through everything that's been happening so you can understand the context and all that stuff so all i ask is that you keep an open mind and that you just receive my energy because the energy will tell you everything i'm gonna have ups and downs i'm going to not show everything largely because i don't want to edit i don't really want to take that time myself talking so much this is an exception because i feel like you know this just kind of had to be that way but i'm gonna play it by ear maybe some days it'll be huge maybe some days it'll be like nothing at all or i don't know my words you know take them however i can't control that you actually understand them just because you speak something doesn't mean that the other person hears what you spoke you know on a journey of accepting that and <laughs> trying to understand and just make that work understand and make that work yeah and i'm also i'm i'm in a good place i'm not doing this for approval or validation that was the thing i think i never got to talk about like that's what pine tree was saying i definitely felt that way but to me feeling that way was an illusion it was just me being afraid to be myself it was me being afraid to put myself out there because i didn't want a stalker i didn't want someone find me and like stalk me and make my life hell again <laughs> you know like i just got past that i don't know i have to believe that i have the answers um because otherwise what's the point of being alive you have to believe that you know something about something about yourself have some sort of like handle on your life in some way not necessarily control there's so much i want to talk about oh my gosh but you're overheating all the time and i need to get back to uh you know my stuff and she needs to get back inside and i haven't eaten yet and all that stuff i just hope that this speaks for me again my energy speaks louder than than anything else uh and that i believe has to convey some meaning <laughs> i feel like i keep like getting off track with that validation thing like this isn't about me seeking validation from anyone it's never been about seeking validation for me uh, it's been about being a different voice in the world of same voices that's what it's always been about and if my voice is the same as yours, that's also okay too. But I believe in my voice being not average. <laughs> and uh, and I'm proud of that. And I like that. And, and I want more of that in the world. And I want people like that. To, and to feel comfortable doing that. To be themselves is, you know, kind of cliche. I think in delayed form, my conversation with Pine Tree about who we used to be and who we are now ourselves, you know, individually... I think it led to this without even thinking about it. I didn't plan on this at all. But I definitely, I think, after that, asked myself, who do I want to be? Do I want to be that? Do I want to be someone who hides? No. I have wanted him to feel comfortable to be himself for so long. I've watched him in so many different ways in the past few years. And I've had the argument with him, like, why can't you just be you? Like, I'm not gonna help anyone if I am not myself. I don't have my phone or anything with me, but I'm putting together a new website because my website is kind of crap and old. One of the things was a Kurt Cobain quote about being yourself. I wish I... Maybe I'll, I'll say it when I get back upstairs. It doesn't matter how, why, what brought you here, but you have a choice always to go back to you. I strongly hope that not just uh, Pine Tree, gosh, I keep wanting to say his name, not just Pine Tree, anyone watching this, but everyone, I hope that they go back to themselves. They don't let life beat them down to the point where they're not themselves anymore. I was telling him, I truly believe that if you're later in your life 
and you go down the route of dating and you've dated at least like a handful of people, they influence who you become because consciously, subconsciously, we are sponges absorbing like, oh, I should do this. I shouldn't do that. This gets me love. This gets me abandoned. That is, I feel like such a, a strong wiring. We all have, every single person has. And so it's impossible. You think you're not being influenced. I thought I wasn't being influenced. Miley Cyrus has talked about this. You're influenced. No matter who you are, no matter how strong you are, you're constantly influenced. That's why they say, like, surround yourself with, with what you want, you know, not with people or things that you don't want because you are what you surround yourself with. And I believe that fully. And I used to not I remember like Tom and Jerry kind of like discussion, like, oh, kids shouldn't watch this. This is violent, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what the heck? It didn't influence me. And yeah, like it didn't influence me to that extreme because maybe I wasn't quite there, you know, naturally. But someone who's like closer to that extreme of violence then they you know end up there and it doesn't necessarily mean like oh i see tom hitting jerry or jerry hitting tom it's usually the other way jerry uh hitting tom over the head with a pan i'm gonna do that it's not necessarily that straightforward of an influence things influence you and relationships influence you in ways that you don't really realize unless you really are really in touch with yourself and that's i think very 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 rare and difficult to do i think so much and i still Still don't have that mastery. I believe we should, I hate shoulds, right? It's a horrible word, but I really believe that she's okay. But, anyways, final thoughts here. So, I truly believe that it would be better if you stay true to yourself in face of adversity. You stay true to yourself regardless of who wants you to be different. There's a difference between staying true to yourself and not growing, not evolving. Change is constant. You have to change, but you shouldn't compromise your true self and you should keep with that because I do believe that when you find people, and I'm not just talking about soulmates and, you know, re romantic relationships, but friends and, and um, co-workers and all this stuff, you get to some point, I truly Truly believe that there is that midlife crisis in a way it might be this you have pretended to be someone else than who you are fully not necessarily you know to a huge extreme and also it, it goes incrementally it's like tiny and you don't notice it because you're with yourself every day and it's gradual and you don't notice it but you get to a point where you're like oh my gosh how did I get here this is not the life I wanted or thought of you know is a reflection of me inside like you know because you don't really change your core but you kind of shut it down or like quiet it that's what i believe you get to that point or you get to the relationship either you're with someone that you don't really want to be or you're with someone that you want to be but you can't connect because you shut down and you put down and you look down on the things that other people look down on you and you look down on them having those things. A good example is guys are told, don't be emotional, don't cry. That's being strong. When they get to, if they like girls, get to girls who are like that, because not everyone's, not every gender is the same, but you know, society wise, like we're, we're sort of taught in those kind of ways. And so most likely a girl will be more emotional, will be more open with her feelings, etc. But but a guy is told don't be open with your feelings don't cry don't be emotional etc they will look down on that girl being that way subconsciously especially because in their mind there will be that little voice of whoever taught them that that is weakness that is wrong and they also might be mad that why do they get to do that and i can't why can she be emotional and i can't be emotional why can she express her feelings and I can't? Deep down, like beyond consciousness. That's what I believe. That's kind of what I have observed as well. I'm not God. You know, if you believe in God, whatever God you believe in, I'm not that. And I'm not even a psychologist. I'm not, you know, whatever. But that doesn't mean that I'm wrong necessarily either. You know, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm saying this is my opinion. This is what I've observed. This is what I believe. It makes sense to me. And I want you to think about it. Truly be open to thinking about it. All I'm here is to like, m my intention of being here and doing this is to like, put these things out into the world. And it's on your terms 
terms how you take them and be open with them i want to be as neutral as possible of a source to you but i know i'm not going to be my looks my voice some things that i say just a anything can like spark you trigger you to be like oh i don't know if i want to believe her because you know this and that so i'll discredit her at, at everything because of these things that i don't agree with or i don't like or are supposed are being suppressed subconsciously by me but i don't i'm not aware to say that you know i was telling him i wish i could say it in this way but to him but i wasn't quite able to uh, in the right state of mind <laughs> on sunday when we talked but that's kind of where where i was coming from it's not that you're the more you meet people and have experiences the less you are you necessarily as adults i've seen this like you become versions that are acceptable in society temperature why i'm getting so hungry but anyways it's still you and you know seeing him like it's still him and i still see him back then too like it's not that he's a different person or i'm a different person like so drastically you'll never be that drastically different it's just because all of the things that you are are you in a way but it's it's what you choose to be more of or to like show up as more and that's different than who you choose to show to the world because um choosing to show to the world is like you're not doing it for you you're doing them you're doing it for the world to accept you and love you and not abandon you and so i i i sympathize i empathize really now i truly empathize now with that but i still believe don't change who you are because people love you for who you are if they don't yet they will be there gosh i know i empathize with this too i know how much you don't want some someone else you want these people even these people might love you for who you are if you are who you are you might not understand that you're not showing up as who you think you're showing up as you know <sighs> life <laughs> but that's i stand so strongly behind that we can think ourselves into everything and anything my dad taught me that go with your heart you can make excuses for why you are cynical why you are not cynical why you are um a hopeless romantic why you are not you can make excuses for why you choose a job versus another or versus following your dream you can make excuses for choosing your dream over a job you can make excuses for not buying a house for five ten years when you could have a long time ago because you're still here in the same city where you thought for sure you're going to leave and that's you know that's a, an important thing and that's you know going back to my phone call this morning morning is i always felt like no i don't want to buy a house because i don't want to uh, live here long term and that's what i also did with career and that's what i also did with relationship even friendship to some point and just everything everything diet everything when the right time comes i'll know when um if i really want oh yeah this is the other thing i wanted to say if i really wanted it it would be easier for me to work for it and i say it that way because i will give you an example it has nothing to do with people it's basically one of my first loves psychology i remember being in psychology i was going to do psychology with neuroscience perfect i was so excited i always wanted to be a singer like an artist musical artist and i wanted to also do like film and stuff at middle school onward i've used those as excuses one but i also used well i'm not a reader because i have i now i discovered i have have ADD and some like physical like eye shifting thing so it, it literally makes it very difficult to read and so I would get frustrated and I just hated reading I didn't do it I'm not a reader and I'm bad at research because um I never I think I never really I, I'm bad at finding things those things can grow but anyway so let me let me just stop there I use those as excuses and it really i knew even then it was fear i was afraid to keep going with psychology i said oh it's going to take too many years i don't want to read and i'm i'm a terrible reader i'm gonna fail i'm uh, like research classes and i'm gonna fail you know reports oh my gosh writing you know 15 page reports i i can't do the research papers oh my gosh no way and here i am at almost 35 there you go my age 
<laughs> and I am going back to psychology because it's still me. It's still there. It's still something that I should have done. And I think about it constantly that I should have stuck with it. Also got a chance in my MBA. No, it's this is better. This will help my music career. This will help this. This will help that. I'm, I'll move out and then think about things. Blah, blah, blah. This will take too long, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll tell you, I regret those. I knew better, but I also didn't know better. The excuses you make in that moment feel absolutely so real and so convincing. It's so hard to differentiate between what is an excuse and what's a real reason and real gut. My dad said a gut feeling, your heart, etc. Those aren't going to make you feel distressed. They will make you feel calm. That's a true gut gut instinct. So, you know, maybe too simplistic. I don't know. And I don't know, maybe it's not the right thing. But I, looking back, like that's, that's true. Definitely use that as like, no, it means that it's not right. Um, This is, you know, the universe telling me that I shouldn't do this, etc. I'll give you another example. Music. I still want to do music. I still have always wanted to do music, etc, etc. The doors are there and they're ready to open for me but anytime that it was opened there was one particular time I went to this guy's um place um he was going to help me produce one uh, of my songs etc etc I walked out of there I was like no you know what I think I was just holding on to this dream for a long time because it wasn't happening but I think like I don't really want to do it few days pass and I still wanted to do it and years pass and I still want to do it and like it happened again in the summer too I can't even tell you how like you don't even notice subconsciously pulling yourself away from that from the opportunity the door literally was open and I was like okay great yeah I'm, I'm excited and then you pretend that it's not even there kind of you can wait forever and in the case with the home stuff, I know that it's the right thing to do. I know that it's not going to trap me. It's funny because you think something that's your dream, like music. How is that a trap? It's not a trap. I really need to figure out why I work so hard. I get to have what I worked hard for or didn't work hard for. Sometimes it just falls in your lap. I freak out. And when I can have what I want... I trick myself in believing that I don't want it. I have to figure out why because it's made me stand static this whole time. And seeing it in another person as well has helped me be like, yeah, Rina, you got to figure this out because I don't want to end up that way. And I don't want that to be for them too. But who, how can I help them if I'm not doing it myself? You know, how can I preach what I don't know, what I don't live, what I don't do? I can't. I shouldn't because I know nothing about it. Who's going to listen to me? Like, well, you haven't done it. There's the saying in Romanian uh, that says, do what the priest says, not what he does. I mean, I think that's like kind of worse than what I'm talking about. But, you know, there's there's some truth to that. But also no one's going to listen to that you have to show up with your actions and that's kind of something that i think american politics sort of (laughs) teaches me anyways i talked about a lot of things i'm also i want to take a moment to be super proud of my hair look at that it took days i cried i actually cried i teared up out of frustration because at first i couldn't do anything like this it looked a mess Maybe I have pictures. It was horrible. It was such a mystery. And I was like, I can never do that. I'm horrible at hair. But here's the thing. Wayne Dyer and what I was just talking about. I'm not horrible at hair. Up to this point, I haven't really tried and applied myself. This, I actually kind of started tearing up yesterday for multiple reasons. But one of the reasons was I got this done. Perseverance, dude. Perseverance. You want something, you do it. That's it. That's it. I was there so frustrated, was like, this is not going to work out because it hadn't worked out previously. It's just like, it's a stupid example, very simple example, but it's like, you can have whatever you want. Nothing's out of reach. Nothing is. You have to just keep going until you do it and you have to be okay with getting it. Again, that's that's the point I don't know. Because this was kind of easy. There's no consequence in getting my hair in a braid. But the other stuff, you know, I feel like there's a consequence to getting what you want. Or maybe that's what people say and that's what stuck with me. You know, be careful what you wish for. So it's like, oh, maybe I should double, triple, fifth check my wishes because what if I get what I wish for? And apparently that can be a bad thing. Maybe it's as simple as that, you know, 
didn't think of that. I just thought of that now. Anyways, I'm gonna go. This was long and she's kind of, um, <laughs> she's, I've moved her to that side because, um, yeah. Anyways, I will talk to you later. Oh, I wish that you could have seen this more. You know, I, I should just talk this way. Because also, I feel like this is better than this. The side I don't like so much. Or was it the other way? I don't even remember right now because I can't see. Oh, that. Oh, you made me go. Oh. just need to stop sleeping on myself. I need to stop making excuses. And I freaking see it in front of me. Not just with me, but other people. Like, I see them do the same thing. And I, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to do. You know, I sympathize. I empathize. But I'm like someone who just doesn't take no for an answer. Not in a bad way. And that's the thing. Like, I don't believe in forcing things. But I think people say forcing in the wrong way. What are you making excuses uh, to not do or not have or not accomplish? My hair isn't quite in the picture, but she is and I am. I should have just filmed this way the whole time. Oh, so cute. Oh, so cute. Yeah, it's not about forcing. Absolutely, it's not about forcing. But I definitely have felt, oh, it shouldn't be this hard. I wrote this blog and I don't think the meaning came across correctly. I don't think that I that I got across what I really meant. I believed in hard work, but I also believed in fate. And I believed that if it's, like I said, with the psychology, if it's meant to be, it, will be, it would be easier. And that's why I was criticized uh, with uh, Pine Tree like he kind of criticized me for like he said that it was forcing it but I wasn't forcing anything I wasn't forcing something that wasn't working or couldn't work or wasn't there you know <laughs> again there's more to that story because like he would say that but then you know that's that's not the full story <laughs> either way it, it was just something that I learned looking at myself maybe for some people that's true that if the, if it takes them hard work it means they're forcing it for me like i know my limitations i know my downfalls and that is my downfall i'll give a very quick uh, simple example i i love being with people i love parties i love all that stuff however my mom had to pay me like my friend in california she's texting me now but she had to pay me to meet up with them with her and like her gang this other guy who i kind of liked and anyways she invited me he invited i don't know who invited who and what i know my limitations and downfalls i know that i want something i'm too scared to get it and i have to push myself literally push myself out the door or i mean my mom used to do it for me for a long time but i have to do that and there's a difference between pushing myself to do something i don't want i don't do that but pushing myself to do something i want i know that i have to do that so it's on me to figure out which is which but yeah hard work doesn't mean that it's not meant to be or that it's um it's not the right thing but i i know that thought uh, process. I totally get that. I've I've been in there. Like it should be easy. I shouldn't. If I really wanted psychology, I would be more than happy to read and research, and I wouldn't have this fear. I lived in that mindset for ten years, and I stopped doing that because I woke up from it. Again, it's not everyone. Everyone has their own different, unique things that they're about so maybe you know for pine tree it's different maybe um when he works hard for something it is because it's not meant to be or it's not the right thing maybe things come easier for him or he's able to like do things that way but for me it's not for i know that some of the things that i want most are the toughest because i have such strong fears um about it about getting those things so but this is also what this is about. Battery is low. Temperature will be high again. I will talk to you later. And uh, hopefully with some makeup. Maybe, maybe not. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna go. It's the end of the year. There's a lot of like vision boarding and all that stuff. But in like a cool way. And like, you know, meaningful way. Not just because like everyone does it. But I'm excited. It's been a good couple of months. It's been like a, a rocky but good one. Because a lot of changes in the air. And I don't really know what to think about it. Or how to see it or what to do with it but it's it's been a year for all of us um but yeah it's it's i'm grateful i'm in a good place even though i have my downs as i have my ups have a wonderful day i'll talk to you later we'll talk to you later maybe
No, she's sleeping. Uh, peace, loving, and passion, y'all. I don't want to do all those like goodbyes because I want something new. We'll see. But I do want to send out peace, love, and compassion and integrity. Okay, cool. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.